Welcome back to Retro Game Geek. So would you believe I released a video about the launch box and a few hours later they go and release launch box 1.0 for Android. So therefore in a few hours my video is obsolete. Well not completely but I thought I'd go over quickly with you the new features in Android launch box 1.0. So let's look at the menu here on the right. See, it's not, nothing's changed there. On the left, we'll go down to uh, the import games also. Pretty much nothing's changed. At least I couldn't see anything different except for some new uh, cores. Options, go in here, and we'll see this is pretty much all the same. I don't know if enable debug logs was there. Didn't stick out at me last time at least. This is a new feature, use hardware decoding for VLC video playback, which also means you can play videos now. As you see down here, you can put in your AMU movies user ID and password, and then you can download videos of each game right to the device. And then you can test it as well to see if you've entered a valid user ID and password. Now I've got too many games on here. I don't think I wanna clog it up with other game or other videos, so. Uh, leave that off, but you can see they've got some new views here. I'll show you real quick in the Atari 7800. They've got a, a two-column view for a text list and a two-column... Oh, I'll just show you that here. You can say change view. And now they've got... They've added this text list with two-column details and wheel with two-column details. And I like this text list with two-column details. And I personally prefer to have the box art and then right next to it to have a gameplay footage or gameplay screenshot. So I'll show you how to set that up. I haven't uh, done that yet in links, so we'll do that here. We go here to change view. I go down text list with two column details. And I super fast, let's go to view settings, which is a new, I believe this is new anyway. It's hard to compare because I can't just go right back to where I was before and see the old app. Well, you see here you've got some options, background fade amount. So here you can choose how much there's, that background will be val visible. Because if you put it all the way up, it's a bit distracting, having that picture so bright in the background, or you can have it set to pretty much zero. Um, this is if you wanna have background videos, stretch background videos to fill the screen. And what I wanna do is I wanna prioritize gameplay screenshots over game title screenshots here. Let's go back. And this is what I don't like, is that the time it took to do that, it already downloaded this checkered flag title screen, which I don't want. But what do I do about it? I can go in the settings and delete it. There's no way to go and change your, like edit your metadata of this particular game, which is really annoying. So I'm just hitting these limits and I'm just like, Ugh, these should get fixed in the future. Anyway, go down here and you should see gameplay footage appears. The trouble, of course, then, is that when you set up these systems, you need to go super fast. It'll download the title screen when you want the gameplay footage, and then it'll stay there forever. You can't change this anymore. So that's something that's pretty annoying, which they didn't find, apparently, in making the software. But anyway, this still looks nicer. And let's try... Actually, I in all games, I removed... The Advanced Wars image and it looks like it's not loading the gameplay image because so I'm guessing there's an XML file that has it in it. But I'm like, I don't want to go down and figure out where the XML file is and reset the metadata. I just want a button here, reset metadata or something like that, but it's not here. So that's the way it is. Um, yeah, see, I got this as well before I was able to change my view. On the positive side though, it feels a lot more stable. So the system itself is moving much faster. When I come in, it's loading much quicker. So like say I um, leave here and I come back in and I actually set this so that if I long press on this, it goes straight into LaunchBox. So I can do that. Boom, right there. Before it would be a bit of a, a hassle trying to get back in a little slow. But uh, that's about it. It's running more stable, so I'm happy about that at least. Uh, hopefully in 
in due time these issues will get smoothed out, but it's still better than all the other launchers in my opinion. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Retro Game Geek.